yeah, lifting the lid up and, and looking at that superior conjunctiva. And I, I think that's such an important thing to look for, uh, the, especially if you're planning, say, trabeculectomy. You want to know what the health of that conjunctiva is. And, yeah, if, if you've got very thin conjunctiva uh, or, on the other hand, you might have very thick tenons, there and you know, just looking at the slit lamp it, it can be very difficult to sometimes tell and uh, I find it's not to actually in surgery opening up the conge and forming this the superior fornic space conjunctival flap that you realize what the state of the conjunctiva and the tenons is so yeah and especially as you say if they've had previous surgery especially if they've had vitrectomy or uh, the old extracapsular cataract extractions, uh, they can have quite scarred conjunctiva up superiorly. Uh, also patients who have had pterygium surgery, so that they may have had a autoconjunctival graft taken from that superior conge, uh, that, that can really uh, have a, a bad influence on the outcome of your trabeculectomy surgery. That's right. I think one of the ways to assess the conge that we do do uh, is uh, actually try to move the conge uh, under the top lid just to assess the mobility of the conge. And also, by if you can move the conge, you can also assess the thickness or thinness of the conge. Mm. Mm. Yeah, there's no real conjunctival grading system, is there? Like, no, uh, there isn't. The other thing that we look for also when we looked at the uh, superior conge area is the vascular pattern because when you're planning your trabeculectomy you want to avoid that big juicy vessel. Mm. Oh, the, you mean the scleral vessels more and the, the uh, collected channels. Actually something also that uh, I am just starting to do more is to look at the episcleral uh, venous plexus and uh, that, that's just uh, particularly nasally because certainly when you're planning an eye stent or, or, or that sort of micro-invasive glaucoma surgery type stents, uh, you want to have an idea of where the episcleral uh, venous system is is most prominent and it, it gives you just a rough idea on the best spot to actually put your stent. That's right and I think this has only just come apart as you say when uh, eye stent uh, uh, has come out and people realise that uh, only when you've got your eye stent in their quadrant where you've got enough collected channels that the eye stain will work. Then again, the other thing that uh, that we need to consider is that you may have few collected channels, but if you put in one that's sclerosed on either side, um, you may not still work thinking that you're in the right quadrant. I think that must play a part in some of the eye stain that failed. Mm. Oh, for sure, yeah, yeah. It's certainly uh, in my hands, yeah, you don't always get it uh, ideally uh, where, where it should be, but yeah, that that's part of the technique of the eye stand. If you enjoyed this lecture so far, please subscribe to http colon forward slash forward slash op dot vision. I hope you enjoyed this series as much as we have putting it together. Thank you.